see that offlane here for Zai. Rusabek was banned off by Alliance themselves. I guess worried that Secret had the first pick coming out and would have maybe taken that as their offlaner. And also the ban onto the Brood. So targeting some of Zai's heroes and they're going to go for the Wisp Tiny. The loader hero for today. And well, this is a problem duo. Lion. It's, it's, it's pretty good against Panda. Um, ultra late game. I think Alliance will probably win this one. But it's going to be whether or not they can get there is going to be the question. Hmm. The Secret's going to hit their timing push that they always do with their Enigma and his back and then Shadow Fiend and his Yules and his BKB. And if Alliance can survive through that, then I think they'll be fine. Okay. Well, it's surviving through that's going to be the big problem because you've got a Brewmaster who also fits pretty nicely with the push strats. We haven't seen what Zyzer is going to be, but uh, for Alliance, they... I guess with this in mind, like stopping that push, they need some good kind of high ground defenders and like some actual early to mid game presence with these last two picks. Whatever I guess your hero for Pycat's going to be and your other support, not to actually have some counter push. Yep. Um. Not sure what they're gonna. I'm trying to think how they're gonna try and combat this because they need something to deal with Enigma. They also need some deep push, and then they also need something to deal with the panda, the, the the panda split. So witch doctor could be pretty good to bounce through the pandas. Yep. They could go for like, a, I don't know if they want to do this, but they could, they could be really aggressive with like an undying. They could do an undying bat rider aggro dual lane. That would be interesting. Um, Bane was another option. It's hopefully it has a little bit more impact impact than secrets Bane did last game, but. It is an option. It's pretty good to deal with um, Shadow Fiend and Enigma if you can channel the Fiend's grip. Yeah. Last game was just tough with the clockwork, so I mean, maybe that's, that's a hero secret consider now. Yeah, that's just something Bane has always had problems with. It's just, it's really tough some, some games to really be useful. Okay, well, we'll see. Game two about to complete its draft and Alliance looking for their last pick. Team Secret, they'll be getting, getting their pick first and probably the Zai hero, but I guess... Potentially could see Brumas even switch up to the offlane, but that seems unlikely based on S Force history playing this hero. So main offlane, and we mentioned like yeah, the Clockwork really good against the Bane. As far as dealing with the Wist Tiny, are there any kind of big concerns or heroes that you may want to pull out for your offlane? Uh, Clockwork just got banned. That would have been a nice one. I'm trying to think what else. Is, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Zai play Brewmaster either. Um, you know, he can. I know he can play it. Um, trying to think what could be really good for them. Get my hero list here. Uh, tch, 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 tch. Could do Earthshaker. They want to do that as an offlaner. That would be okay. Ten could do. I mean, this is like Yoki. You just play whatever you want in the offlane. You pull out an Earthshaker, a Sand King, a Rubick. Like... Solar Spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Rubick could be cool. It wouldn't be that bad this game, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, they could do the offlane morphling. That would be really good, actually. I think. Hmm. I mean, that's one of those. Yeah, against to just keeping a tiny stunned and locked down. That's actually pretty potent. That's one of another hero, which it's like it's not like an AOE hero, but I've seen teams trying to push high ground against the strength morphling, and it's just like he has a ten second stun, which he spams on your troll every like constantly. And it's like, how do you push into that adaptive strike spam? Is just another like I don't know. <laughs> Seems so annoying. But we'll see. Secret using up their time here. Have you seen Zai play the offlane morphling? I haven't, but I, I if I know Zai, I know he can play like every hero. Yeah. So I think he'll be just fine on that hero. Maybe it's time for the techies. Pull it oh. back out. Yeah, could be could be a techies game. <laughs> what makes the game a techies game? <laughs> That's what I'm curious. Have... I think when they have a lot of um not a lot of ranged heroes yeah or like heroes with short range like bane doesn't have the best range batrider doesn't have the best range mm -hmm. 90s melee obviously but they i mean it's an elimination match i don't think they're gonna pick it i don't or think it's, it's elimination, elimination no but it's i mean if they this best of three at least they would lose this best of three yeah. if they went with the techies i feel like that's something that they do when they're up a game or yeah where a match doesn't really matter that much yeah it's this match, pretty important. I mean, seeding and stuff. As far as the group goes, the other two teams is Goomba and Scary Faces in this group. Scary Faces, so. they put up. So they did. They did work in the uh, phase one. 
They are 1 and 0 so far. They beat Goomba, so... I mean, all Scary Faces have to do is beat either Alliance or Secret, and then they qualify for the LAN Finals, so... Here we go. Offlane has come out. Well, Offlane comes out for you. Secret, it's going to be a Tide. And as for Alliance, a last pick, Mirana. Core Podum, it's back. <laughs> I've been waiting. You don't have to wait, man. You're a captain. You can draft what you want. If you, you, don't, if you no, want something, you make it happen. That's not how things work, man. <laughs> Why not? How, how do things work in the, the EG, EG camp? I mean, if I pick you that know. hero and we lose, <laughs> you don't even know, man. Okay. That's my, the team, end. my team, they're so salty, man. I, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> okay, so we'll see the podium come out for Alliance as they carry good synergy with the Bane, of course. And you've just got two really strong dual lanes here. You have a Wisp Tiny who can put a lot of pressure on a Shadow Fiend mid. It may not even be a Shadow Fiend mid because of this. You may consider putting Brewmaster there. And you've got the Bane Mirana who can have a lot of kill potential regardless of what they're up against. Yep, yep. It's, uh, I like Secret Joust a lot better, but once again, Secret's got the big team fight. Uh, Alliance has more of the pickoffs, so if they can take these scrappy fights like last game, they should be in a much better position than trying to fight 5 on 5. Right. Um, issue that they have this time is I think Secret's going to be able to just kind of 5 man towers and force the issue, whereas they couldn't really do that last game. That's where. There's only so much like a Bane Morana can do. Like beyond the laning stage, Alliance may have some problems then, I guess. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, but if the back gets a good start, Tiny farms well mid, and um, Tidehunter doesn't get too much out of the offlane, then they could be in a good position to have a an aggressive mid game like they did last time. Okay, well we'll introduce our two teams on the Radiant side. Team Alliance, up 1-0. We're going to be running Niqua on the offlane. Batrider, Pycat going to be on a farming Marana. It's going to be Majka on the Bane as I lose PPD. Hopefully he'll be right back. Aki going to be User playing the Wisp and Loda on the Tiny. For the Dire side, it's going to be Zai on the Tidehunter headed to the offlane. Kuroki playing the Lion. Tinky Winky or Shadow Fiend or Ateezy on the Shadow Fiend. We've got S4 playing the Brewmaster. And finally, it's going to be Puppy on the Enigma. All right, we'll see things kind of unravel here for the two teams as, uh... Are you back with me? I saw you rejoin the channel. Yeah, your voice is a little robotic for me. I was just specking if it was me, cool. if I could do anything about it. But it's not, it's not too bad. All righty. I'm cool. actually doing Bane Podom in the offlane. So, dual lane's going to be up against a Lion Brew, it looks like. I guess they, they get this 2v2 laning setup, but... Do you feel like... This is going to be actually that much of a stronger lane coming out from Alliance in this 2v2 setup? Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, the Lion can't really do too much. The issue is that Lion has boosts, Bane doesn't. And it might be tough to find a kill on the Panda. He's pretty tanky. Alright. Well, mid lane is going to be that Wisp Tiny, so Shadow Fiend not going to have much fun here. Did go for the level 1 race just to make sure he can get a last hit here or there, maybe using that, but. Especially with the block going the way of Alliance. This is a creep wave that is not really easy for him to farm or contest. And this also gives Alliance this 1v1 with the Batrider versus the Tide at bottom. So another kind of advantageous lane for Alliance. It feels like all three lanes they've maybe got a slight edge in. But Secret do have that jungle farming enigma. Yeah, this Tidehunter versus Bat matchup is kind of tricky. Um, if the Bat misplays and wastes too much mana, sometimes the Tidehunter can start doing really, really well. Um, but we'll just have to keep an eye on it and see how it goes. I don't think it's that bad for Tidehunter. Okay. Hasn't got the magic stick yet. Could be looking to pick that one up. But has lots of tangos, a salve, and plenty of HP regen. Ake getting off the pool in this mid lane. So denying even more farm and XP to Shadow Fiend. Something you can Ooh. do with that range creep. Doing it again. Mm. Is he going for it? Uh, I no, think I he mistimed it. it, but... At yeah, some point, Loda's like, yeah, I'd like to have some creeps to help me farm here, but... <laughs> no, no, no. Otherwise, he's just tanking keep... the tower. Keep Shadow Fiend, not level 5, and okay. he'll be eternally grateful. Top lane, bit of a fight going out. Looks like Magica may go down into Self Nightmare, looking for the deny. He's gonna get the deny. S4, this may be your first blood. Mirana manning up, gets hexed up. Who's going down first? The Appel comes in, first blood. Kuro. S4 has a salve and tango now. He doesn't even have to go back to base. That was a pretty close one. Carathin's gonna go down mid. Whoa! Okay, this tiny in a nutshell. Yeah. 
That nightmare was... up top, by the way. Arrow to follow. S4, he's in trouble. That's, That's your kill. nightmare arrow, and down he goes. Kill. Bought his items, at least. Didn't lose any money for that, but... Still a kill that's going to help recover this offlane. Yeah, it's really, when you trade kills like that, like you get a first blood and then you come and die right after. It's it's generally worse in the mid lane. It's not too bad because they're sharing dual experience. Um, but this panda is like super tanky, so they tried to kill him for first blood. They just didn't have the damage to do it. A really nice deny, though, from the Bane onto him. Well. Okay, so we'll see how this top lane progresses from here. 15 CS on your Mirana, 12 on your Brewmaster. Seems so far pretty even between the two teams. Uh, looking at the mid lane, Loda with 15 CS, Shadow Fiend just 4. This has not been a fun or easy lane for RTZ. That's going for the... Mm -hmm. 5 for stacks. Killer. That Anchor Smash allowed the Bat to get even more on top of him, but... I think he was in. fine. Because I think the Kraken Shell was going to like, um, activate the there lane. in a second. Yeah. yeah. They hadn't proc yet, so it was about to proc and then remove all the stacks, and he would have been fine. Okay, so Ty getting okay farm here against the Bat Rider. Actually, pretty much they're on par with one another. And the Bat has chewed through a lot of his mana. Just looking at it from that perspective, uh, the Tide is actually maybe in a slightly better position in this lane currently. Yep. Needs to get a follow on Bat Rider. So top river, it looks like uh, four minutes approaching, the runes coming out. Magica going for this one, but here comes Puppy. Just level one Malefus, which he doesn't really want to throw out. He's uh, had that free farm in the jungle. It looks like he will be hitting that kind of four and a half minute level six, which you can do on the dire side. And Puppy has just had that uncontested free farm so far. Yeah, but Shadowfiend's in big trouble. He's still level three. That means oh, he can't. Bottom lane, by the way. Well. They've gone in on Zai. He gets well the Kraken right when he needed it. Looks like Nico almost got that kill. I don't think he's going to come try and gank bottom. Or that maybe he's just jungling. Is a no, play just... you would not expect. That is like a last resort kind of play. Level 3 Shadow Fiend roaming. And I think it's going to work. That's the funny thing here. No points in Gush. One raise. Is there another raise? He's got the long one. Nikwa still alive on 20 HP. He goes down to the roaming Shadow Fiend. Okay. <laughs> I've seen it all now. Top lane. Mirana gets a kill to start things off on the line. And they want S4 as well with the Wisp rotation. It looks like it will be two kills. Going with Alliance, a double for Pycat. Nice rotation by Ake. What about, are, any, <laughs> what about your thoughts on the, the Arteezy rotation? I mean, gotta find Farn somewhere, right? I'm surprised he didn't stay down there and just be like, Alright Zai, this is your tax. <laughs> I guess he's going he, to take the next three waves. He's got five CS, I mean, it, yeah, the kill alone, I feel like is uh, only going to help him so much. And the jungle being taken up by Puppy. Puppy level seven though, so he's got to be considering going for like a smoke black hole maybe, or at least a rotation Ravage. somewhere on the map. Like that. Dead again. It's uh, not looking good for Nikwa. The firefly damage, Zai may go down first! And Nikwa gets Kuro low. He gets down to 100 HP. Nikwa coming out on top of that one. That's... I mean, you talked about the recovery. You get killed, but then you come right back and get the solo kill. That is yeah, big for big. your bat. The, um... Here comes your, your roaming shadow feed again. <laughs> He had, a, he had a full magic wand on bat. Like, who who expect who expects that? Okay, well, RTZ not gonna find your your bat rider in the jungle. If he waited around a bit longer, maybe would have. Oh, he's going in the jungle. Does he find this bat? He'll see the firefly trail. I'm not gonna head the right direction immediately. Probably almost at top. So Pycat hitting level 6, Phase Boots, Wraith Band, Bracer going for lots of early game stats and we'll see what he can make happen. Throws a blind arrow to the creep wave, actually scouts out the curry it looks like, he's, he, he's not going to go for that one. Thought about it. Uh, yeah, just do it dude, you got it. <laughs> trust trust yourself, you know. Have some faith. Uh, maybe You're with the DD, player. he actually he refills his bottle. Player. He'll get it. <laughs> That's some, some optimism coming out from you. Avalanche, toss mid lane. That's an easy one. Artur, go back bottom. Just kill Bat again. <laughs> it really feels like the best uh, place for him to get kills in farm. He got 12 souls for that kill. So, and now he's, he's going to lose them all again. Maybe the Dire Jungle can open up for him with a Puppy maybe rotating around more. Push the top lane, possibly. This game, Secret's getting super punished for picking Enigma so early. Like, Alliance is winning every lane. And Shadowfiend is in big, big trouble. Yeah. 
And it just prevents... It's not like Puppy can really even push or do that much top lane, because the top lane hasn't even been won by S4. He's not like... He's, he's nowhere near a Blink Dagger, picks up a bottle just for some regen. No, he's in, he's in trouble too. Like, he's not farming and well at all. Mirana as an offlaner right now is very elusive. You can't put any real kill threat unless Mirana misplays and gets too close to the line for a Hex and Pale, so... Pycat just sitting back and... Keeping, trying to keep Secret off the tower, but now Secret gonna come in, start looking to push things down with the Bassy Ring, and we'll see what Secret can do here. Arrow hits S4. There's a DD rune. S4 getting low. Star fall. S4 dead. Damn. Pie Cat, what a player. And you, you, you said it. Like you gotta just trust in yourself. Make the plays happen, and that's it. Pie Cat does it. That was a big kill. Meanwhile, mid lane Loda has an avalanche toss and he's going in on the tide hunter. Zai. Ravage gonna get used underneath the tower. Hits both with the Anchor Smash as well. Here comes the counter kill. Arteezy. He wants some souls. He wants some kills. Loda wants to turn around. Has a toss available. Zai. 75 HP. Just a. Oh, that was a. Uh, oh, it's just a level 3 toss, so. Didn't get the damage he needed. So, Bats moved into the jungle. He's just about. He's gonna finish his Blink Dagger right here. Bane has found levels and farm in the bottom lane. Which is really good. He picked up a, oh, just some tranquil boots. Um, they had to give up the top tower to the Enigma, which is actually a really good for Secret. It's going to help their cores get some more farm, and help that Enigma is getting really close to a mech, which is going to be their way back into the game. They're going to have to team fight with the black hole and mech, and just hope things go well. We're going to wait a little bit of time before the ravages back up. Zai will. Decide to TP down bottom. He's actually got, I mean, he had the 1v1, so as he should, has some okay farm. 35 CS and 700 gold for this playing mid lane. They go in, there's a Fiend's Grip, and that's a dead Brewmaster. S4 is 0 and 4. Is that where they type the S in her voice face? <laughs> I think that is the time for that. Especially uh, with his current start. I mean, both game one and game two, they've been putting a lot of pressure and emphasis on shutting him down. It looks like they spot the SF mid. There's going to be a blink lasso coming out. Arteezy not ready for this one. Three heroes converge, and it's going to be Bane who gets the last hit. Yikes. This is, this is not the team secret we are used to seeing. Alliance, though, they look really good. Normally, secret is pretty good in the early game laning stage, but... The, the... Another kill with Tom. Oh, solo kill from Mirana. Meanwhile, mid lane, it's going to be a TP in from S4. He has got the split, which he may need to use. They do, I don't think they've got any detection for this. Okay, they've got sentries on Enigma. That's it. What? Rookie bot back there, too. What, what's Pycat? What's he been eating this morning for breakfast? He needs to do more of that. He is playing fantastic on this Mirana. I'm telling you. Whew. It's working. Yep. He's gonna look. He's even pressuring a T1 tower on his own. He's got the drums, picked up gloves of haste, so Macy's like a maelstrom mid lane. Loda, kind of in deep here. The wisp is seeing behind. Doesn't have level six. No relocate out. There's your black hole. S4 gonna just throw the split to help secure this kill. I think they'll just take the one kill, but ideally they're gonna fish for more. Magica off to the side. Not gonna be an easy kill. Has a brain sap in three seconds here. Kura making his move in. Finger of death online, and just gonna need an impale. So a two. Kills or two hero kill pickup in the mid lane for secret, but they lose the top tier one tower. That's your Mirana claiming that one and finger used on the Bat Rider. Lion still alive and he's gonna get healed up by the Wisp if he needs it. That's a long cooldown on that finger of death now. Um, an interesting. Just, uh, I'm not sure what Lotto is exactly doing that far up, but big kills for secret. That's gonna help them a lot. Arteezy oh, starting to get some catch-up farm. 2, 3, and 1. Also gets some CS now to go with it. Oh god, that's a lot of damage coming oh, out mid lane. Thrown from afar, couldn't quite latch on. But Pycat continuing to be a menace here in this game. They have an arrow. They see tie on, on the Ancients here. I think Pycat's going to go for it. Arrow followed up. It's just a level 1 leap, so he may have, I don't think he can leap over the cliff. Yeah, Throws it to the north, hits enough. it, and... I really get yet. Leap, Starstorm, Zai in trouble. Brain Sap will finish him off. Nice kill coming out by Alliance. And now they've still got a smoked up Batrider. He's fishing for more. Does he see Kuro? Blink, Lasso catches out your Lion. There's a Fiend's Grip if they need it. Don't think they will. Uh, Pycat comes in. There's your mech. I don't think that's going to be enough. There's an Arrow and another kill goes away of Alliance. Good conservative play using their spells. They've still got the Fiend's Grip. They still didn't even have to use a Starstorm from Pycat. That's also secure the mid T1 tower. 
Big. I, do you think? I think Pycat's probably going Maelstrom, right? Or do you think that's a Midas? I think it's a Maelstrom, but I could be wrong. I. It feels yeah. like if they can be more aggressive and just keep fighting around the Maelstrom. Loaded yeah, with a Midas, I feel like is enough for your late game. Lord has a. Oh, Lord has a Midas. Yeah. I didn't even notice. That's. I think a fresh pickup. He bought the point booster first and then went back for the Midas. Did he? Okay. Relocate top. They're going in. They want S4. No split for five seconds and S4. Avalanche. Bat Rider Firefly brings him down. They're just finding kills left, right, and center. What's the secret? He's, he's so far away from Blink Dagger. Yeah. This has been a rough game for Brewmaster. One and five now. Lotus looking pretty good on his tiny, but yeah, it's been really the Mirana this game. It will be a Maelstrom, so he picks up the Mithril Hammer, throwing arrows just towards Roshan to make sure no shenanigans from your Enigma with the Eidolons. May actually be going for this. They get some Eidolons here. They've got a smoke, two smokes on Puppy, but for now they're just going to be sitting behind Arteezy on Shadow Fiend. Yep, maybe a line. Maybe Yeah, I think it's going to be a comeback Roshan. They've got the Eidolons and everything. Puppy... What's the high ground? Oh, but they, they, see the they see the ward. They know. That's the giveaway. But can they fight it though? I'm not sure. They moonlight shadow. They're going right. going in. The baddies to heal. He can't be there. Puppy needs to drop this sentry ward. This moonlight shadow is coming in too. Now he's going to leave with an arrow. Should get spotted, but Artizi does not dodge it. Can they get in here in time? Puppy doesn't get the resummon on the idol once. They haven't got the damage. Four hero in avalanche. Toss. Kuro low. They get off the Requiem of Souls. Load are going to go down to the finger here. And they've still got the Ravage to fight this one. Pycat on the high ground. Doesn't get hit by the Ravage. He may throw some arrows from the north. Goes in on Puppy. Stars from right click. Brings down the Enigma to start things off. Pounces up after Kuro. Kuro in trouble. One more right click. Pops the drum. Will get it. There's your tether across. Hits the slow. Primal Split now coming out. And it looks like Alliance. Gonna back off. They bolt back on their bane. TP coming in from your tide, and Pycat throws the arrow. Doesn't actually hit onto the shadow feed, but there's a lasso, and that will hit. We'll bring Arteezy onto the high ground, and Arteezy gonna be trapped up here. Can go for a TP, but that's not gonna work. He goes down with three heroes dead. Team Secret in a lot of trouble here. s 4s ulti is worn off, and he can't TP against the flame break. Doesn't even have the mana for it right now. Alliance just crushing Team Secret here in game two, at least so far, and Roshan. Not even secure. That was just yeah. one observer ward revealing the smoked up position. Yeah, I think if they. Pycat was throwing arrows kind of randomly in there. And that was actually really unlucky that they had a sentry ward there for Team Secret. But nevertheless, really good re um, response from Alliance. And they. I thought the fight was going really poorly when Loda just kind of ran in and got killed right away, but. Um, Pycat's too Pycat. big. He's. Yeah, he did a lot of work that fight. He just felt like the Queen of Pain from last game, where he's just staying on the edge of the fight, finding a kill or two, and never really putting himself in harm's way. That was more Loda, who's, I guess, a lot tankier, so he soaked up most of the spells. And, well, we'll see Alliance go for the T1 and the T2. They don't really follow with Roshan, even though it was about half HP. Take some big map Alliance control there. Okay. Looking good. Loda's getting pretty close to Aghanims. Eventually, he's just going to be too tanky for Secret to even kill with these big ultimates. Yeah, I think that's where last game. fight he was happy to run in just because of how tanky he is. Yeah. Pycat hits an arrow at bottom. Don't think he gets this kill even with the Maelstrom. Pycat actually oh, running low on mana. Okay. The full staff leap is there and he'll get out to safety. Relocate top. top. Oh, ATZ. Instant TP. Can they find him? No. Close. Why not? At this point, yeah. for Alliance, you'd... they weren't going to fight with Mirana completely mana depleted. Batrider was bottom lane. Just take a gander, see what you find. What is the comeback for Secret here? They've, they've picked up a point booster on Puppy. That that seems like an odd choice of items. Aghanim Scepter. Well, oh no, he goes Bloodstone, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure Puppy's Enigma build is Bloodstone bots. Okay. I mean, make him pretty tanky if he... I mean, whether it's Nags or Bloodstone. Nikwa here at bottom on Shadowfiend. Oh, SF gonna ulti this one, but it looks like Nikwa finds the kill and makes sure he doesn't get too close to the Dying Requiem. His bat right up to 2k gold. That's your boots of travel money if he wants him. Yep, that's what he's gonna pick up. They're just finding kills left, right, and center. 18 kills to 7, but it's a 10k gold lead early on, and... 
Secret need to use this team fight of theirs. They've got the Blink Ravage, they've got the Enigma. They've got the Brewmaster who still does not have a Blink Dagger. 17 minutes in, your safe lane S4 Brewmaster is struggling. He's almost got it though. And that's... I mean, you get these items, ideally you want to try to take some team fights and at least maybe go for a smoke, but Alliance's vision around the map sees so much movements and can really kind of tell when Secret go. If they go missing as five of the map, it's going to be very obvious very quickly for Alliance. Yeah, Secret probably just needs to try and farm a bit for right now, but once they're able to... They're, they're getting pretty close to level two ultimates on their, on their cores, and that'll be a big deal. Just in terms of like damage and yeah. usefulness. Yeah, they've got what, three level 10 heroes who are yeah kind of approaching that level 2 ulti point. As for Alliance, they seem just content to sit back and get their next couple of items as well. Tiny completes the Aghanim Scepter, has 1400 gold on top. And Nikwa now with a gem pickup. So they're going to focus on just getting complete map control. There's not much Dire Vision. One over on the uh, south side of Roshan, but Nikwa hasn't kind of scattered that one out just yet. Action from Secret. Big smoke gank here onto PyCat. This bat may reveal it. Oh my gosh. What a, what a position. He actually goes in, he's gonna pull tight onto the cliff. Lock him in place and have fun, Zai. TP out, flame break. He breaks the TP and keeps him on the cliff. That's a dead tide. Nemo on the south fight. Puppy looking maybe for a black hole here. They're gonna get the chain sun off. Arteezy goes down, the black hole's there, but only onto loader. There's no damage for this one, Kuro. He's low on HP. Aki will finish him off. The relocate back. Aki leaves the tiny there to stay fighting. And meanwhile, Puppy brought down. That's four dead. Brewmaster blinks backwards. That was your five-man smoke around the Brewmaster blink. And they get massacred. Pycat chases onto the high ground. They want S4. All S4 is do can do is just throw out a clap. And it doesn't look like he'll be able to save his own life. And Pycat evasion. Iron Jesus kicks in and... I guess Secret will take any victory they can. They throw the arrow from afar. No. Well, this is an Ag's Tiny breaking your high ground. He went they for the plate have, mail. They still have Requiem and Ravage. So, I might try and see something there. Let's see if Loda commits to this one. It looks like they want to go on this melee barracks with the overcharge. He's hitting at a decent attack speed. Here we go. Blink Ravage. They've got a Brewmaster clap. Aki's the target first. And then they move on to Loda without the protection. Alliance. They've overextended. They'll give up a couple of big kills and. Secret, gonna hold on to their racks for now, although they've still got a big deficit to overcome. Those are big kills though. Those are really important. They might even be able to get Roshan. I don't know. It's gonna it's gonna be close. They have relocate up on Wisp, so no yeah. buyback on Tiny. But the recipe for his AC. Okay. Doesn't look like they're going to the Roshan pick just yet. They haven't they can't bring it down that fast, really. It was like, the, if they could sneak in earlier with the Eidolons, it's one thing. But now, more time's gone by. Roshan's getting tougher and tougher. And looks like Alliance at least have vision around the pit. They see an Eidolon. They kind of get an idea that Secret aren't actually in the pit. And Alliance will have the Tiny respawn and just get back to business. Yep. Uh, Pycat's actually almost got his BKB. Yep, he has it. That's pretty big. Doesn't have to worry about Lion or Requiem or... Ravage or any panda's abilities, and but he's secret. gonna kind of have free reign in these fights. Secret just being completely dewarded now as well. As Batrider swoops around the Roshan pit, checking it out and taking down some wards. So no dire vision up right now. Puppy plants a ward over the mid lane. We'll see if Alliance can spot this one out. So two hero smoke from Nico and Machka. Not sure what they're gonna find. This is kind of the time of the game where Secret are probably just gonna be grouping up as five, maybe having one hero off farming, but for the most part they need to stick together. Bane smoked. He's actually looking for a, a play here. It's not have any wards uh, or anything. Find a hero by himself and relocate in, but it's <laughs> kind of a risky play to go for. We'll find the tie. Batrider. Oh, he's going to find Enigma. Oh, that'd be a bigger kill to get. Puppy, one of the more fun heroes in the game. They're going on the line to start things off. No Ravage to be used, and Kuro will get off just one Impale before he goes down. Puppy needs to be careful. Has a mech, but the Flame Break will push him kind of backwards here, and... Considering a chase here, S4 just going to clap and deter any additional aggression. But no follow-up kills. Just the one pick off for Alliance off of that, but they will now get to work on the tier 2 mid tower. Something that Secret not really able to defend. Without Black Hole, without Ravage, looks like this is going to be a dead tier 2 tower. They're going in on our tour top. 
No tier. No BKB picked up just yet, and Got he's trapped in place. Right he's gonna have to use it. Yeah. Hope for the best, and well, I don't think the best is gonna be very good. Just the Invis Batrider with Firefly. He's throwing raises and trying to do what he can, but Nico will get him with the Flame Breaker. Yeah. Even have the Wisp Heals help him, help him out. Bottom lane, they almost catch out the Enigma with Bane, but not gonna happen. And Roshan for Alliance with a D. No, no DD. Just a high cat with an Elstrom. Loda just gonna whittle away at this one. Not the easiest Roche for Alliance, but it looks like uh, they should be able to get this over. No, they're gonna back off. They get. I feel like it's gonna be too tough for them. Yeah, they need that Wisp there to um, overcharge the Tiny. They should be able to do it. Also, if they could just finish the AC on Tiny too, he's almost, he almost has it, so that'll help speed things along. Yeah, Kuru's going to get the Hyperstone, he's just 500 more gold, so... And that's when Alliance, it feels like you're going to get kind of hard to beat or kill in a fight. Like, you can go in, hit a Blink Ravage, but if Lotus got a Wisp Tether overcharge on him with the extra armor from an AC, it's unlikely you bring him down unless you throw all your magic damage on him at once, so... And if you do that, then it's the Mirana who's getting kills on you elsewhere in the fight. Up to level 15 with a BKB Maelstrom. This Pike at Mirana has been quite the playmaker. The core core podium, as you said, the carry podium is uh, making a case for itself. It's definitely real. But you kind of see like the plays that he made, they're all like super finesse plays. They're kind of like, you don't see like, when you pick podium, you don't expect stuff like this to happen. Yeah. Like he just had such an outstanding performance on the hero. It makes it look really good. It's been a, a dream game for sure for Pike at. Not, not even, I mean, not like a dream game, like he's just he's just playing super well. Yeah. So it's like it's hard to say, oh Potem's such a good hero when it's just Pycat just playing out of his mind. Okay. Well, you mentioned the load AC, it's now come out and with that Alliance may consider going back towards the Roshan pit. Arteezy finally farms up his BKB and they actually smoked up secret. Worried about this Roche going down, maybe looking to contest this one. Nikwa is nearby. Is he gonna scout out another smoke gank? He's done this before and oh it broke the lion. No detection. No detection. That's unfortunate. Dust. Oh, there we go. They catch up. This is just your Bane, not really the ideal target. They pull an Arteezy. Avalanche is there. What's that? Relocate. No! Ravage catches two. Black Hole as well. Going to catch up Loda and Ake. Can they bring him down? The Wisp is dead. Loda gets fingered. Oh, boy. Nikwa now on his own. Trying to run the hell out of there. Further to the south, it's the Bane caught out by the Primal Split, and it looks like Magicka. We brought down. The Gush is there to slow him, lock him down in place, and a three for nothing. Good smoke gank from Secret. They'd love to get a Roshan off of this. We'll have to see if they can. It was a poor team fight from Radiant. Yes. It looked like they had Arteezy. Loda was just like running at him with the avalanche toss and suddenly he just blinked away because of the relocate. That was yeah. odd, to say the least. Well, that's all your ulti. So if you're Alliance, as soon as you respawn, you say, let's go again. Let's take a fight or take a roach because Black Hole Ravage on cooldown. Pycat gonna have Puppy walk right into him and that's looking like a dead enigma. Nice impale from Kuro, the blink catches both with this, and Puppy gonna be finally brought down by the Batrider here to the low ground, goes Pycat with the leap, can they chase after him? Blink from your tide coming up soon, but doesn't look like he wants to go blinking down there by himself. Chase is on, no Wisp relocate for another couple of seconds, but that's a couple of seconds which is gonna be over fairly soon, here we go, Aki ready to kind of relocate in. Not gonna go for it though, they kind of lack the vision except further up in the lane, so maybe when they see some of these heroes they'll consider it, but... Oh. Team Seeker used all of their ultimates there. They have two minute cooldown on Black Hole, a minute cooldown on Ravage, 40 seconds on Panda Alt, and 20 on Requiem. I think, yeah, they should definitely just go take an objective, whether it's Roshan or maybe even Bottom Barracks. They might even go for both before Black Hole's back up. Yeah, hit already. There's your Wisp with the overcharge to help load out Arrow as well, so. No way Secret can contest this one. This is just uh, something you just gotta let go at this point. With that, we get an Aegis on Loda, and suddenly you're looking at a push down the bottom lane. Unfortunately for them, there is a big creep wave near their tier 2 tower, so if they want to push bottom lane, they're going to have to spend some time pushing it out, which during which that black hole could likely come back up. So, seems they may even consider going for a push down mid. Yeah, they could also just farm BKB on Tiny, it would be just fine. Last fight, he just got demolished by Ravage and um, Finger of Death. Another thing you mentioned during the draft, if you get to like the late game with Alliance having the Tiny, like they should be pretty good. It's just that scary team fight from Secret more around the mid game. You get load up to a BKB, you get him like another item on top of that, and Alliance exactly. should be good. So they don't have to end the game 
with all disages. Secrets, all of Secret's damage is based on their levels and their abilities rather than their actual items at farm. So they're kind of peaking at the moment. And I think this is generally the time that Secret would have liked to have been maybe hitting on Alliance's barracks. Um, but things just obviously didn't go their way. Well, Alliance now going to make the move towards the bottom lane. It's a TPM from your Batrider, who's now got a BKB of his own. So he doesn't have to worry about getting counter-initiated on when he goes in for a Blink Lasso. This seems like a very crucial item for the Alliance push. Are they going to go for it? Black Hole's almost up, isn't it? This is not a good push. They should just go farm uh, Lotus BKB. Maybe just feeling a bit overconfident because of the Aegis, because of the Batrider Blink Dagger. Let's see if... This fight goes as poorly as you think it might. They catch out S4. Can they burst him down before the split comes into play? The arrow is there, and uh-oh. Down goes your Brewmaster. He's got to buy back, and he may have to use it. We'll throw it out. The Requiem BKB from Arteezy. That's a dead wisp, and Loader now kind of trapped. He gets forced off to the low ground, but not sure that's going to be enough. He's coming back up, and there's a black hole waiting for him. Are they going to throw this one out? Loader turns, gets a toss on Arteezy. The Avalanche is there. That's your buyback from your wisp. Ravage catches out too. Black hole from Puppy. Just on a Loader. The flame breaks there. Nice play from Niqua. Good positioning. Blink onto the high ground from Pycat. He's going to bring down your puppy Enigma, and now the rest of the heroes trapped on the low ground. Pycat and BKB just going in on Zai. He wants the tide. He goes back to the high ground now with that full stop, but he's going to do down in the end. That's going to be a dieback from S4 if he can't get out of this one. Flame break will push him back. And now the brain snap. Right click damage. Pycat with an ultra kill. This Mirana just too damn farmed to fail. Yeah, Pycat did so much work that fight. They Picks up a mask of madness. <laughs> They focused on the Tiny and the Wisp, and Pycat just right-clicked everyone down. Well, they want to end the game. Was, I didn't think that fight was going to go well for them, but um, Ake's buyback on Wisp, he relocated in and then tethered up the Loda, and then overcharged him during the Black Hole, and um, they didn't really do any damage to him. He actually ended up tanking like all of Team Secret's ultimates. One of those weird games where, well not weird, but an interesting way how things transi transitioned because Loda became more of just the front line. He never actually dealt huge amounts of damage in a fight, he just tanked most of the spells and let Pika do what he needed to do. Yeah, that was a nice team fight by there at the end from Alliance. I thought they needed Loda's BKB, but I was, I was wrong. Really good game from Nikon back, but Pycat, game one, he was like 15, 2, and 17. This game around 13, 1, and 7. He has played a hell of a series to take down Secret 2 0. Secret maybe not looking as untouchable as some people kind of thought as far as the European scene goes. Ah, uh, I mean, Alliance has been doing really well. Um, just, uh, you know, maybe just an off day for a Secret, but you can't expect everyone to show up 100% for every um, online tournament, I think. Yeah. But they still have, they're still in a great position. Uh, the other two teams in their group aren't very known, so it'd be very unlikely for them to lose a best of three. So, at the end of the day, this match probably won't mean too much, except for just, um, I mean, Alliance is probably really happy. They played really well, and they should be. Puts a bit more pressure on Secret, because they cannot drop another series now against either of the other teams, even if they are less, uh, less known teams. Sure. So, well, we'll see if they can do that. Big thanks for joining me, PPD. You know, it's been a lot of fun, as always. Thanks for having me. That's good. You guys can check out PPD. Follow him on Twitter at PPD Dota and watch his team Evil Geniuses play when they do. They're pretty good at Dota as well. So that's it. Style of Europe done for today. We've got the Summit 3 America, the final team to qualify for the Summit 3. You're going to be decided. That match is in a couple, like an hour and a half or so. Not today versus Complexity. Uh, nice. That's going to be over on the BTS stream. So we'll see you guys over there. But myself, Gods, as well as PPD.